Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. You know, you saw us bring these bar joists and stuff in the other day in preparation for building a trailer for that sawmill. First thing I got to do is get them all plumb and, and uh, in line with each other and everything, cut off the amount that needs to be cut off, and then go about the business of squaring them up, plumbing them up, and uh, start putting brackets and braces and all that stuff on it. Like I always say, we try to do everything that we can out of salvage material, but there comes time whenever you got to cut your losses and go ahead and, and spend a few bucks. This is one of those times, simply because I want this mill to be as accurate as possible. So I had to bite the bullet this morning and run down to a, a local iron shop. Pick me up some 2 inch by 3 16 thick channel iron. It probably is not going to be as convenient of a trailer to work the sawmill on as is the factory trailer, simply because this is going to be on 14 inch bar joist, so it's going to be several inches higher, probably about 9 or 10 inches higher than the standard trailer. Uh, that's going to create a bit of an issue whenever it comes to adjusting the height of your of the log stops on the back side of these fan mills uh, because you probably either have to walk all the way around the ends or whatever. Don't know yet. That's a problem to be foreseen and then a problem to be solved whenever we get to that point. But I'm going to show you what I'm doing to make sure that the beams are parallel with each other and that they're square with the brackets that I've got holding them in temporary in place. Almost everybody in construction knows uh, the rule of three, four, and five, or six, eight, and ten. What you do is you measure up 36 inches and put you a mark on something. You measure out four foot and put a, a mark out there. And if it's perfectly true and square, the dimension from out there up to the three foot mark will be exactly 60 inches or five foot. So that's the rule of three, four, five. As you can see I've got a four foot T-square clamped down there right across the ends of what is going to be the ends of the trailer. So if I hook the end of my T-square and come over to my three foot mark, I know you cannot possibly see it there, but it is dead on five foot or 60 inches. So I know at least I'm starting out square. Well, it's 98 degrees right now. Um, it's about 2.40 in the afternoon. So it's a perfect day to be making some sparks. Um, I'm not gonna apologize for turning the fan on, but I'm gonna turn the fan on. got some uh, clamped on braces just to hold everything halfway square but I've got the ends cut to the proper length now you know I tell you all the time you know I build as much as I can you know out of just salvage material so with the term salvage obviously means that uh, it's less than new uh, you have to be willing to accept you know the condition of this material uh, and it takes a little bit in some cases to get it to where it's uh, worthy of use on your project uh, this one's not uh, not any different. Right now, for instance, I got to knock off a bunch of tabs on top because when they set these in place when you're building a building, they put the big old heavy gauge roofing panels, the great big channeled roofing panels down on top, and the iron worker comes along or the sheet metal worker comes along, and he'll go ahead and spot weld, just burn right through and spot weld those right to the surface of the bar joist. So whenever the building's torn down, whatever for whatever reason, a lot of times those spot welds hold. So if you look right up through here, you'll see a whole row of those spot welds. Well, I got to clear all that off. Plus, I got to buff it down a little bit where I get a good ground for welding and everything, you know, and of course, grind the rust off and all that because, you know, you want, don't want to have the impurities in your weld. So uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of work that has to go into using salvage material, but it is what it is. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the uh, fan, get it back on. It's another 98 degree day right now. It's just about right wearing my long sleeve shirt, you know.
the clamps and everything you see is just stuff to hold everything square and plumb. A piece of string will tell you a whole lot. For instance, here's a piece of string right here that I've got attached to both ends at the same distance out at this end as it is the other end. And that way I can measure all the way up through here and make sure that all the little wiggles and jiggles that are in these old used bar joists are taken out. I've got four of them welded in so far to hold the bottom at the specific width it needs to be. As soon as I get that, the rest of the way to the other end, I'll come back and we'll start here at the top, make sure everything is plumb, make sure it's not racked this way or racked that way, but make sure it's plumb up and down. And then we'll start welding some brackets and braces in across the underside of the top to make sure it all stays intact. I've squared the entire frame. Now this thing is 21 foot 4 inches long from one end to the other. Crisscrossing with a tape measure, I'm exactly 1 16th of an inch uh, difference in the two measurements. So I'd say that's close enough, you know, for, for what it's going to be. Now guys, I tell you all the time, I kind of stress the point that if you build stuff out of used material, you have to be willing to deal with rusty iron. Rusty iron, you know, even though you can kind of clean that surface rust and everything off, a lot of times, depending on how long it sets, it's going to have some pits and everything in it. Does it weaken the steel? Eh, yeah, but I mean, you know, come on, not that a great extent on the type of project and stuff that, uh, that I build. You have to be prepared to protect yourself, you know, about this, because you got to clean your, your dust and everything off, and you don't want that dust going into your lungs. I really should have a, um, a really high quality uh, N95 respirator at the very, very least, or the even better uh, replaceable canister type filtered uh, respirators to keep this, this heavy metal dust from entering your lungs. However, I usually don't do that, but what I try to do is when possible, I set the fan up just like you do with welding fumes. If you don't have a welding fume extraction hood or you're in a situation where you're welding where you can't use one anyway, I just blow the welding fumes away with a fan and that same thing I'm going to do here with the, uh, with the dust. Now when you're cutting out stuff and uh, making things are going to have to have multiples of the exact same angle, the exact same layout, you don't measure each one individually. You make one real good accurate cut on a piece of metal and use that piece of metal as a pattern and then transfer those angles to all the different pieces of metal. In this particular case, I have some weird angles and stuff you can see right here. I got some weird angles on uh, this one's not so bad here, but they have to have that configuration in order to fit up underneath the bar joists to create those diaphragms or the strength of that triangulation across that dia uh, as the diaphragm. And so um, there's 10 of them required. So I made this one extremely accurate and then transferred them all, cut every single one of them, ground the dust off of them as much as I could. And now we're getting ready to tack them into place. So uh, that's just a time saver because if you go to try to measure every single one individually, uh, you know, they're all going to be, if everything is plumb and square, which this trailer frame so far is, they're all going to be exact and identical. But what you do is you make your pattern and then go all the way one length of the project from one end to the other and try it in every position that one of those multiples need to be uh, installed in and make sure that your pattern is going to fit in every particular spot. When that's the case, grab your scrap metal and start tracing them out, cut, and get ready to weld. Hey, you know, a lot of times guys will take off welding on something and they'll just weld continuous all the way across two pieces of metal. In actuality, that is weaker 
than what it is that I'm doing right here. This right here is kind of referred to as skip welding. There's ways to figure how long those individual welds need to be for maximum strength. But I kind of go by gut feeling, knowing that this is not going to have a tremendous load. I'm not that concerned about it. So what we're doing, we're maintaining the integrity of two separate pieces of metal that will work against each other, similar to a truss, if that makes any sense at all. That's what the theory is behind it. And by the way, these are 7018 low hydrogen rods that I'm using. I should have showed you, but I used the grinder and the buffing wheel and got her anywhere where there's going to be a weld, got her as close to perfectly shiny metal as possible. Well, that's pretty much all the bracing for the underbelly. While I've got it here, I'm going to go ahead and figure out some axle perches and exactly what I need to do to get the axle shackles and all that stuff mounted. It's really looking up and it's very sturdy, exceptionally sturdy now with all of these cross braces um, left and right, you know, and for racking. I think this one stretched out far enough. I think we're going to end this one here. So, you know what? This is Trackman 44 and I'm out of here, guys.